Hello, beautiful, beautiful black people. I hope that all is well in your world. Beautiful, beautiful black people. Do you know that black folks right here on this plantation called America have a legacy of enduring, of enduring, of surviving injury and healing. We have that legacy. Our ancestors was kidnapped, put on slave ships, brought through the Middle Passage to the Americas. Our ancestors suffered injuries. They endured injury and healing. In September of 2020, black folks right here on this plantation called America are still enduring injury and healing. Every time a policy is created, implemented by these racist white bastards in the federal government, in state government, in local government, we are injured. We are denigrated. And we heal. We heal every time a racist white cop publicly lynch an unarmed black man, a black woman, a black child. We are injured. Nonetheless, we heal. We, all of us, most of us black folks, have what I call Post-traumatic slave syndrome. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. It is a result of a legacy of enduring injury, death, lynchings, dismemberments, rape, sodomy, etc., Etc. And then having the intestinal fortitude, having the cognitive ability to survive all of that. Black folks are a hell of a human being. Black folks are a hell of a human beings, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. Black folks are help human beings. Do you know that through the lens of history, we can understand how we have become so reticent, so reticent to expose ourselves with the onset of the slave trade in the Americas, the very fabric of African lives were shattered. The lives of our ancestors was shattered when they were stolen and enslaved and enslaved. Slavery violated the primary value system of family and tribal relationships. Slavery violated that sacred connection. The violation of these relationships over generations 
resulted in large groups of black folks feelings unsafe our ancestors felt unsafe just as today large groups of black folks still feel unsafe large groups of black folks are conflicted Large groups of black folks are confused. Large folks, large groups of black folks are unrecognized. And large groups of black folks are still disrespected. All of this, all of this, all of that contributes contributes to a heightened sense of shame. Do you are you beginning to see clearly that why so many black folks are still confused today? So many black folks are still conflicted today. So many black folks still feel unsafe today. So many black folks feel like they are inferior. They are ashamed of themselves and their own people, having very low to no self-esteem. In Africa, on the continent, of Africa. Self-esteem and self-respect is earned as a result of being a contributor. As a result of being an equal member of one's tribe. And to the extent that one contributes, one has worth. All of that was stripped from our ancestors. It injured our ancestors. It conditioned our ancestors. It affected the genetics of our ancestors. It has been passed down through many generations of black folks. Are you beginning to see clearly why so many black folks in September of 2020 are feeling unsafe, are still conflicted, are still confused, are still feeling disrespected? are still feeling inferior or shame of themselves and the black racial group because all of those family connections tribal connection that culture were stripped taken from black folks as a result as a result of slavery individuals were remanded to group inferiority that's what that conditioning as a result of slavery did it caused black folks to believe that they were inferior. Where no one had worth in the eyes of the dominant culture. Do you get it? To our enslaved ancestors and still to too many black folks in September of 2020 
No one, no one has worth. No one has worth. That feeling of worthlessness have been socially engineered into black folks by the dominant culture. White folks, racist white folks, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. Instead of asking themselves, how can one contribute and thereby establish worth? The question became, how does one establish a sense of worth and avoid shame when all of the members of one's group are relegated to the status of chattel slavery? Are you beginning to see clearly Are you beginning to understand why so many black folks are still ashamed of themselves, self-hating to the core, self-hating to the core, running from their own folks, black folks, and running to white folks, running to white folks. How can one establish a sense of worth and avoid shame when all of the members of one's group are relegated to the status of chattel slavery? There it is, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. How essential is self-esteem and respect to human beings. It is utmost. It is of the utmost importance. Self-esteem and respect to human beings can change the lives, the thought process, the actions, the words, of human beings. Many, there are many social scientists and clinicians suggest that all human beings have an essential need for respect. Among, among them is physicians, and scholars, scholars like Dr. James Gilligan, who writes, Dr. James Gilligan writes this, and I am reading it. Let me begin with a common empirical observation that people, that people feel incomparably more alarmed by a threat to the psyche or the soul of the self. People are more frightened and alarmed by a threat to the psyche or the soul of the self than they are by a threat to the body. It's all in the mind, my beautiful, intelligent, like brothers and sisters. What one think is of the utmost importance. If it's positive or is it negative, is it self-defeating Is it low self-esteem? Is it self-hating? It's all in the mind. People 
will willingly sacrifice their bodies if they perceive it as the only way to avoid losing their souls. There it is again. Fact. It is true. Losing their minds or losing face. Losing their minds or losing face. In addition, a person only develops a stable, integrated, and differentiated sense of selfhood, selfhood, high self-esteem, selfhood, or identity, high self-esteem, through the process of intersecting with other humans in the community or in their own culture, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. The psyche, the mind, the psyche is a is as dependent upon being nurtured by those modes of relationships and community of child dearing, child rearing, and education, which we call culture. As the body is being nourished by food, the relationship between culture and character is an unavoidable socio-psychological reality. There must be a positive, a strong relationship between culture and character. My beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. If there's not, then what you get is low self-esteem, shame, self-hatred, behavior issues, mental issues, a negative thought process, etc., etc. There's a consequence. There's a consequence of the fact is that a perceived threat to the integrity and survival of the individual personality or character and to the viability of one's ethical value system, which is a central and essential component of both personality and culture and is what most intimately link the self and its culture. The self. Finding yourself within yourself. Finding yourself within yourself has a direct linkage to one's culture. My beautiful intelligent black brothers and sisters. The culture and its selves. Those are among the reasons why the death of one's culture, the death of one's culture, our ancestors' culture was stripped, taken away from them. The death of one's culture is tantamount to the death of one's self. There is again, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters, the death of our ancestors' 
culture was tantamount to the death of our ancestors, to the death of themselves. When individuals and groups feel their honor is at stake and an intolerable degree of humiliation or loss of face would result from a failure to fight for that honor. They may act violently. They may act violently. The loss of self-esteem is experienced subjective as the death of the self, the loss of self-esteem is subjectively the death of one's self. People will sacrifice anything to prevent the death and disintegration of their individual. Uh, or group identity. Black folks are survivors. Black folks are the real patriots. Black folks are the real men and women, children. Black folks have survived. Black folks have a legacy of enduring injury and then healing. Black folks have a legacy of enduring injury and healing. That's all I have on this one.